Hi, this is Luke for Production Expert. There are many things that you can't do with a reverb plugin, but there are still a few things you can do to your reverb to make it stand out from the crowd. So in this video, I'm using a little bit more reverb than I would ordinarily so that you can really hear what it's doing. So the first thing to try is pitch shifting your reverb, and that can work especially well on percussion instruments. I'll just try that the other way, maybe go up a bit. Back to natural. But I'm preferring it down here a little bit more, I think. Now you can use that trick on pitched instruments and even vocals, but you will have to use shifts of one octave to maintain the correct musical relationship. So another trick is to use ducked reverb. So if I have a lot of reverb on my vocal, sometimes I want to reduce the level of it while the vocal is happening to improve intelligibility. So I'll play you it first without ducking with a ridiculous amount of reverb going on. Six. But using a ducker, side-chained off the dry vocal, I get these nice, enormous reverb tails after each vocal line. Six and twenty seconds, all it takes And the answers to the questions And the flash of inspirations till we wake And with a bit of refinement, I can have that playing nicely within my mix. So that's sounding okay, but my reverb at the moment is quite static. So to add some stereo movement and interest to my reverb, I can automate my pan controls if I want, but for a little bit more control, I can use a dedicated auto panner. Six and 20 seconds, all it takes. And the answers to the questions and the flash of inspirations till we wake. But as soon as I use some auto panning across my reverb, I get a really obvious movement across the stereo field. Six and twenty seconds, all it takes. And the answers to the questions and the flash of inspirations till we wake. So those are three reverb tricks for you to try in your mix. Head over to the Production Expert blog to find out more and to read our full article.